Welcome to Second Opinion, the reviews show here on the Nexus. I'm your host, Ian R. Buck, and today I will be sharing my experiences with the Android beta of Run and Empire. Find the show notes for this episode at thenexus.tv slash SO42. All right, so Run and Empire is an app. Uh, the concept is it's a running and, and fitness game uh, where you have this uh, this empire, this, this kingdom that you're controlling in, in the app, and whenever you go out for a run, um, you open up the app, you you tell it I'm starting a run right now and then um, after that you can like switch apps or lock your phone or anything like that it'll it still runs in the background um, and so what it does is it tracks your location as you run and the map in the game is uh, made up of hexagons so they've taken the, a map of the real world divided it up into hexagons and then any hexagons that you run through uh, are, are hexagons that you are attacking in the game um, and so if you if you attack a neutral territory, then that hexagon is yours automatically. Um, but if you are attacking somebody else's territory, then it becomes disputed territory. And then over time, uh, whichever of the, those two people runs through that hexagon more often or runs through it faster um, will get it. I'm not sure exactly what the criteria are and like what what factors go into determining like, who gets it ultimately um but you you get it that's kind of the the big big picture concept so this game was first announced uh i became aware of it i think in 2014 because my roommate in college declan uh he found out about it and he let me know about it and uh and we were both really interested because we're both runners we met on the cross country team in college and um, by that time, uh, I wasn't on the team anymore um, because, frankly, I was spending too much time podcasting to, you know, go to a, a, a track meet and a cross country meet every single weekend. Um, but I was still, of course, running, you know, for fitness. Uh, and so, so we were both like really interested in this kind of competitive um, fitness tracking app. So fast forward to uh, to this year, 2018. Um, we, you know, I've been on their mailing list for a really long time. Been waiting to hear, you know, when the game is coming out. And of course, uh, they started a beta for iOS a while ago, and you know, just patiently waiting for them to do the same for Android. Um, and uh, and finally, I got an email from them on uh, April 20th this year and uh, saying that I got into the into the beta and so I've been trying it out for a little over a month now and uh, and here's what I've found so obviously since it's the beta they they haven't implemented everything that is going to be in the final game Um, but what they have implemented so far is they've got a really consistent visual style which I really really like um, everything like that the map is all kind of uh, like a sepia tone so it looks like an old old map um, not like not many things on the map are actually labeled um, but it's you know if you if you know your city area well enough then you'll be able to uh, recognize stuff and you know because it, it does have streets and everything um, the you know, there's there's a little like helper person who pops up every once in a while. Um, his his like, he's very kind of, f- he's made up of flat polygons, uh, which is uh, a really cool art style that I like. Um, the app will track your runs on the map, so that's implemented, um, and you can capture hexagons and add them to your territory. That's good. Um, when you're doing this, it does increase battery consumption uh, noticeably, but it wasn't as bad as I was expecting. I was kind of worried that this is going to be like a Pokemon Go situation where um, the app would uh, drain my battery faster than I could even charge it from a, off of a uh, an external battery. Um, but it's not it's not that bad. I um, if I if I go for a couple of like 35 minute runs a day, um, it, it just you know, means that I might need to, um, I might need to charge my, my phone for, you know, like a half an hour during the day before I go to bed. Uh, when you run through hexagons in the game, uh, they give you coins, which you can use to buy buildings and workers at your home settlement. Um, and right now in the game, 
the only thing that that really gets you is just it gets you more coins faster. Uh, so I don't know exactly how that's going to tie into like the final version of the game, uh, but right now um, it's it's essentially just like a, a cookie clicker um, <laughs> clone within a running app. And also in the uh, in the beta right now, you can share a run with your friends. Um, and what this does is it literally just like takes a screenshot of the end screen that you see after your run, and then um, you can send that in whatever you know email app or messaging app or whatever uh, to to your friends to kind of brag about what you're doing. Second Opinion is supported only by listeners like you, who voluntarily donate on our Patreon. Money we make through Patreon will go towards buying products to review and improving the quality of the show. Our content has always been released for free, and always will be, but if you want to go that extra mile, you can get cool rewards like access to The Fringe, our behind-the-scenes after show, access to polls to help us choose future products to review, access to show docs as we're working on them, Nexus stickers, and your name shouted out right here on the show. Not to mention, you will have my eternal gratitude. So if you're interested in helping us take this to the next level, join us at patreon.com slash the nexus tv. Again, that's patreon.com slash the nexus tv. Uh, there's quite a lot that has not been implemented yet. Uh, there is no multiplayer. Uh, I scrolled around on the map and, you know, was looking for other people's territory. Um, I didn't see anybody even when I, like, went all the way over to London because uh, this is a London-based uh, developer, so I figured a lot of their users are probably uh, in that major metropolitan area. Couldn't see anybody's uh, territories. Uh, and uh, and I also can't log in with an email address, so, like, yeah, there would be no way, I think, to, to tie uh, that territory across devices or anything like that. Um, they also haven't implemented their anti-cheating methods yet. Uh, they, they stated at the beginning, you know, that um, if, if somebody's using motorized transport or if they're biking, then, uh, then the app won't allow them to count that as a run. Um, and I fully admit that I have been using this app. I've been doing recording runs uh, exclusively while riding my bike um, because... At this point in my life, I don't really go for runs for fitness anymore. I just bike everywhere that I go. That's my primary form of transportation. I don't even own a car. Uh, and so so I've just been taking um, taking those opportunities to kind of record, uh, record my bike rides, um, which means that most of my territory is along my daily commute to and from work. Um, but yeah, they like the app hasn't told me like hey looks like you might be biking instead of running and it hasn't like prevented me from using any of those uh to add stuff to my territory or anything um so yeah they just probably haven't built in their anti-cheating system yet uh and then f monetization uh is not a part of the beta so i know that the final game is going to be free to play um which means, of course, that they're probably going to have microtransactions. And um, there is, like, a store that you can see in the beta version of the app um, where you can, like, buy gems, which are different than coins, of course. And um, and I, had, I got a handful of gems, I think, when I first, like, opened the app. It just kind of automatically gave me 15 of them or whatever. Uh, and so I used them uh, to like give myself a boost in terms of like how many coins I got for for the day um but I I can't buy any more gems uh when you go to buy more it says buying gems is not currently available um and also I like I can't see any reason to buy gems in the current iteration of the game because like all that they do is they just get you more coins and what do coins do coins just make it possible for you to get more coins faster and, like, they don't have any effect on anything else in the game, whether it's gameplay-wise or, um, or even, like, customization-wise. You know, you can't, like, change the look and feel of everything or, you know, give yourself some something that other players can see or anything like that. Um, yeah, so they're, they're definitely going to have to kind of build out that part of the game. 
uh, before they launch the, the full thing. Uh, and then finally, there are a few things that I would like to see tweaked uh, in this in in this beta before it before it launches. Um, there isn't really a reason for the game to be full screen on Android currently. When I op- you know launch the app, it uh, makes my navigation buttons and my um, the notification tray up top uh, disappear. Um, this just makes navigation harder, like even inside the app because um my back button is gone and so i have to use like the back button in the app that's way up at the top left corner and like you know that's kind of a stretch that's the reason that we have the back button down on the lower left hand corner of android screens um so yeah please please let this app just be a normal app um the buildings and workers and and things that you buy with coins in order to get more coins uh that definitely needs balancing um currently i mean aside from the fact that it just feels like a cookie clicker where i'm just like buying more workers in order to get more gems or more coins faster in order to buy more workers in order to get more coins faster um but also like it doesn't the the rate at which you get coins from these workers doesn't really match up well with like how long it takes to accumulate enough science points so as as you get more coins then that in, in increases your kingdom's like science output and once you get enough science then you can advance to the next age which kind of wipes the slate clean um gets rid of all of your buildings and all of your workers but the workers and buildings that will be available to you from then on are going to be more powerful than the old ones um but i i have been often like running into a problem where i just like i have bought so many um I've bought so many workers, right? And so the the way that they kind of balance this is as you buy more workers, each consecutive worker costs more money. Um and when I once I get to the point where like the next worker is going to cost around 8 quintillion coins, um then the cost rolls over into negative numbers um because at 8 quintillion or so, that's where you exceed the maximum integer that you that computers can store if they're using 64-bit systems and um (laughs) and so like once it gets up to the point where it's in negative numbers then i'm not spending money in order to get better workers in order to increase my gems faster and at that point i'm just like okay i'm i'm just gonna stop buying these things and i'm just gonna you know i'm just gonna be patient um and wait for you know for my kingdom to accumulate enough science to, you know, go to the next, next era. Um, and yeah, so there, and this whole thing needs to kind of tie into the rest of the game better. Um, there needs to be some sort of gameplay benefit to buying all these buildings and workers and things. Um, because like, if it's just feeding back into itself, it's, it's pretty pointless, especially, especially if none of the other players can like see what I've got in my kingdom. Speaking of really big numbers, um, the user interface itself isn't very well suited to displaying really big numbers. Um, I've had a, a few times where like they've kind of overflowed their the bounds of where they were supposed to be displayed and they kind of cover up other stuff in the user interface. Um, so that's something that needs to be tweaked. And uh, And then finally, yesterday I actually ran into a bug where all of a sudden... Uh, after a run that I went on, I lost all of my hexes that were part of my kingdom, uh, except for the hexes that were a part of that run that I, that I had recently gone on. Um, so I, I I feel like I have like combined that, you know, I've lost everything in my kingdom. Um, also with the fact that like, I feel like I have explored pretty much everything that there is to explore in this current beta version of the game. Uh, so I think I'm gonna be done testing it for a while until I see that like the app is updated and there's you know new stuff to to check out in it. Um, but yeah, I'm I think that this can still be a really fun, uh, motivating you know factor to get out there and go for runs. Um, especially, I mean the 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 
competitiveness is kind of the key there, and since that isn't built into the game yet, I can't really evaluate it until until that comes out. Um, I also kind of wish, I mean, this is a personal thing for me, since I bike all the time now and I don't go for runs very often, uh, I wish that there was some version of this, something equivalent for bikers, that would be really cool. Um, but again, yeah, that whole competitive aspect is only going to really matter uh, if enough people use it. All right. Thanks for listening to this episode of Second Opinion, everybody. If you would like to give us feedback on this episode or suggest uh, further things for us to review, because uh, we, we can review anything that you can imagine almost, uh, go ahead and contact us at The Nexus TV on Twitter or send us an email at TV at gmail.com. And I have been Ian Arbuck. You can find me on Twitter as Ian Arbuck. Uh, or links to other stuff that I make at ianrbuck.com. Have a good one, everybody.